Both folks with addiction and family members struggle with understanding whether addiction is a personal choice or a complex brain disease. In a video essay, Pleasure Unwoven, A Personal Journey About Addiction, Dr. Kevin McCauley of the Institute for Addiction Study explores the arguments for and against this vital debate. He turns complex neuroscientific concepts into easy to understand visual images that help addicts and their families to better understand addiction and to encourage improved communication within the family. And we will provide you with some links. When we consider that addiction is a disease, a brain disease, we are considering the fact that it is a multidimensional disease, which means it affects all parts of the being. When we look at um, what parts of the being are we talking about for the individual, we are discussing the bio, psycho, social, spiritual model. Addiction is a multidimensional disease. We are going to continue to discuss the biological, psychological, social, and spiritual impacts of the disease, not only for the individual, but also for the family system as well. As we go dimension by dimension, the first one we'll discuss briefly is a biological dimension. That could be anywhere from the genetics that somebody may display. We at this point know that addiction has a genetic component. Uh, we also have high responders versus low responders to substances. Some folks are more likely to become addicted than others. And additionally, we have medical issues both as a result of addiction and also prior to addiction that could be contributing factors to the disease. Results of addiction medically could be organ diseases such as heart disease, liver disease, stomach issues, dental issues, uh, and also cognitive structure can be affected in terms of brain damage. So we've seen uh, parts of the brain may be taken offline either temporarily or permanently as a result of addiction. In terms of brain damage, what we see in active addiction is that the midbrain or the limbic system are more activated than the prefrontal cortex or the decision-making part of the brain, which can impact cognitive functioning, decision-making, judgment, inhibition, impulsivity, and so forth. As we move forward to the psychological consequences of the disease, here are a number of contributing factors we might see, such as anxiety, uh, heightened anxiety, depression, traumatic memories, uh, pessimism, perfectionism, impulsivity, and personality disorders. Additionally, in terms of behaviors, we may see irrational behaviors such as different defense mechanisms. Somebody with active addiction rarely wants that to be out in the open and wants other people to know that there is an active addiction at play. So there will often be blaming, making excuses, denial, could be emotional outbursts and withdraw from reality, interest, and passions. Uh, folks in active addiction who used to have many activities once upon a time tend to have a shrinking base of activities as they move forward in their addiction and it all becomes about one thing which is the pursuit of the stu substance uh, and the pursuit of the addiction. Moving on to the social dimensions of addiction and the consequences. Uh, we also see social anxiety, uh, more isolation is typically the case with somebody in active addiction, uh, relationship issues, loneliness, as well we also see reduced social connections and social circuits revolve around using. So somebody's social network, uh, somebody with addiction, their social network is typically folks who are also using as well and have addiction issues. As we move on from biopsychosocial to the spiritual dimension, we see folks who have recovered from the disease talk about the emptiness, um, meaningless in life, lack of purpose, and un unable to connect with anything bigger or broader than the self. Here we have a slide of the complete spectrum, biological, psychosocial, social, and spiritual. We also have the contributing factors, the results of addiction, and also what is the treatment based on what those consequences of the disease are, such as for biological and genetics and the results of addiction could be medical in terms of organ failure and diseases. Uh, we look for a potential abstinence treatment, meaning that we would like folks to be able to help to stop using substances so that they can begin to make new neural connections. We also look at other treatments such as getting in touch with the self, 
feelings, uh, other capacities, reality, to reconnect mind and reality. For social, we want to have social connections reestablished. And treatment, what that means is folks will start going to AA meetings. Uh, they will start discussing their addiction with other peers who have been through the same thing that are also here in treatment at the same time. We would also likely recommend that somebody get a sponsor, somebody who has sustained recovery over time and they can speak to it and be a guide for somebody moving through their steps. Additionally, we, would, we have uh, peer recovery support specialists on site that also help to enhance the resocialization of somebody who has a substance use disorder. In terms of spirituality, we look for folks to begin to look at something bigger than themselves or outside of themselves so they can begin to get help. We don't prescribe any kind of religion, but we do want to help folks to be able to ask for help and get the help they need to get from, if, if anything, if nothing else, maybe just a group bigger than themselves is a good starting point for folks in early recovery and in treatment. What we typically see biologically is that folks tend to recover over time, their brain comes back online, they are begin to experience the joys of life again, uh, and they are also able to begin to discuss their emotions openly and honestly, and that also helps contribute the brain to recovering, along with medical interventions that folks receive while they're here in treatment.